responsible, but raised the number of concerns that they identify as needs. Hey, call Ian Reid Buyer Advocates, 9430 Gentlemen, Mr. Williams, some bracelets. Just a simple little... What we have in front of you is a National Panasonic DR49, also known as a RF4900 uh, in the Panasonic range. This is part of their Command Series. This is the last model in the Command Series and probably the um, top level version of this series of uh, receivers. Uh, the RF4900 is uh, the unit that has a number of extra features including the full digital display across all bands and all frequencies. What I'm going to show you now is how to take the case apart and get to the internal operating technology. Okay, to start um, removing the case on the RF4900, you need to first remove the rack mounted handles on the side. This is done by taking these clips off, which clip off fairly easily from the front. Followed by removing these two screws that hold the, the handle in place. Once you've removed both handles, remove the screws which are behind the handles and the covers, this screw this screw this screw and this screw once those have been removed remove the back screws one two three and four remove the front screws one two three or if the unit has it, remove this middle screw on this end. Then flip the unit upside down carefully to remove the screws on the bottom. This shows the bottom of the unit and you need to remove a row of screws on each side. One, two, three and four and four screws on the other side. One, two, three and four. Once you've removed the bottom screws, you need to remove the back screws on each side of the unit. There are four screws in total to remove. Once you've removed all the screws, there's quite a few to remove uh, on there. Grab the back of the unit, fingers in there, hold the side and move forward and the case will slide out quite smoothly. This will reveal the interior of the unit and the first of the two tuning condensers uh, on the main boards. If you look to the left here, you'll see the speaker, the audio board down the bottom, and the power supply board upside down on the bottom left-hand corner. The next step is to flip the unit upside down. When the unit's upside down, you will see eight screws on the peripheral. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These eight screws need to be removed and the bottom cover will come off neatly. Beware when you take the bottom cover off, there is a connector to the battery compartment. You will need to disconnect that from the power board. Once the screws on the bottom of the board are removed, the power board can be gently lifted. Beware that there is a cable there that needs to be removed connected to the battery compartment. This is a simple clip mechanism that can be 
pulled out gently. Once pulled out, this board will now separate. You now see the underside of the unit. What we have here is the audio board. It also contains the main power supply filter capacitors, the input side of the AC voltage and the main power transformer, the bottom of the R2 RF boards in the unit, and part of the second tuning condenser. If we turn around the side there, you see the second tuning condenser. The Panasonic engineers use some very clever design techniques. This is basically two receivers in one. Two separate tuning condensers, two separate oscillators. One designed for AM, FM and shortwave up to about two to three megahertz. And the other one for shortwave coverage from, from three megahertz up to 30 megahertz. In this way, they can avoid some of the design compromises that are required for such a broad coverage receiver. The next stage of dismantling it, you need to put the receiver back on its uh, base area and it's a case of removing the knobs. Now all these knobs and all these switches are all press fit. There are no screws, no special catches, they're all press fit. So they basically are removed by pulling strongly against the unit. Sometimes they're quite hard to pull out. There's just a temptation to actually try and pry them out. If you pry them out, you'll find these aluminium edges are very thin and they will be damaged if you attempt to pry these out. If it's a struggle to put them out, try and use two hands and as much force as you can apply and they will come out. This one here's a bit stiff. I'm using two hands and it does come out. These small ones are a bit easier. Proving a bit hard. This one's actually quite hard to get out at the moment. What I do is use some soft cloth, a couple of layers, and try to get some leverage with a pair of pliers. Pull it out that way. Okay, once all the knobs are out. There's one more piece to take out, which is the front of the power switch. The unit is now ready to remove the front cover. Once you've removed all the knobs and the switch cover for the power switch from the front, you need to go to the back of the unit and remove six screws. These screws are actually marked with a slight bit of red paint as part of the factory. On this side, the screw is there, there, and there. There are three of the screws. I'm now gonna turn the unit upside down and you'll see the bottom screws. On the bottom of the unit, there is a screw under the audio board. You can see it um, from the side. There's a screw there. And there's one last screw there. Okay, removing these six screws, remember they're all painted red, will actually enable you to take the front cover out. Uh, you will need a long screwdriver with a long uh, shaft to be able to actually get to the screws and remove them without damaging them. Once you've removed the six red screws, you can see them there that they're slightly painted red, you're now ready to move the front cover. To remove the front cover, it's a case of gently prying the cover open and it should come out quite easily. There are some wires behind here that you will need to disconnect, so move it slowly. The first wire to disconnect is the frequency adjustment cable, this cable here. 
me disconnect it by pulling this socket and that cable will come out freely once cleared. Once you've connected the frequency adjustment, you can take the two speaker connections off and the unit is now free. Sometimes catch. The unit is now free to be removed. This exposes the front of the unit. We can see the main meter, main tuning knob, the secondary tuning knob. The switches remain intact. The dial front and everything should be quite good in that respect. The mechanical design of this, the, the Panasonic engineer did an amazing job. Uh, I've dismantled and worked on a number of these 4800s and 4900s, RF 4800s and 4900s and I've had very little problem with the mechanics, the dial cord or the tuning mechanisms. Where these units tend to have difficulty and problems is the potentiometers, these ones down here. They end up becoming very scratchy over time and need just a good clean and a deoxid using the deoxid type formula to uh, clean the contacts. The other problem, if you look down the side there, is the audio board. The audio board can be removed quite easily and, will, and once removed, the ideal action is to actually replace all the capacitors. Uh, the capacitors on this board, on the audio board, are probably the most highly stressed electrolytic capacitors and uh, you can test them but it's just as easy just to replace all of them. I also when I do replace the, the electrolytics on the audio board you will see a large electrolytic down there which is the main power supply filtering capacitor. Uh, I tend to put a slightly larger one in there just to improve the filtering from the power supply. You can replace it with the original one. The other area that needs a little bit of work are these mechanical switch switches here and there. Now these switches are mechanically controlled from the front. They have a, a driver mechanism mechanically coupled to the front of the unit. Uh, what I do is tend to use a fair bit of deoxid and uh, contact cleaner to clean these switches, rotating the switches, and that tends to improve a lot of the RF performance because these switches also get um, corroded and don't make good contact. Another area of improvement is the tuning condensers, both of them. They tend to be a bit scratchy and it's the contacts at the end of the tuning condensers where the, the center shaft is uh, connected to the electrical coupling. Uh, again, deoxid and uh, contact cleaner in there and a bit of movement to clean that up. Um, I've rarely had to do anything on the main boards I think the Panasonic engineers use very high quality components and even though this unit is probably close to 50 years old, uh, the components are in very good condition uh, on there. I've yet to do an RF alignment of this unit. I don't have the equipment and I'm a little bit reluctant because the performance of these units after cleaning the contacts has been so good, I haven't seen any real strong need to actually touch the RF stage or the alignment. I'll end the video here. I'll need to reassemble, just reverse the process. Uh, nothing is forced. The unit comes together quite cleanly and quite simply. The mechanics are just superb. The electronics are amazing.